I have three book reviews. <laughs> okay, the very first one is um, uh, it's not even really a supernatural novel, but it was just so profound that I, it was one of my favorite novels that I read this summer. It's called The Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. I don't know if you want to hold it up to the video. Okay, so there's no supernatural elements that happen in the story, but if you're talking about the idea of being haunted, <laughs> and again, we'll hope that Ted can uh, paste it. We'll send Ted yeah, a picture we'll, later. Yeah, I'll paste these off. So, uh, when you're talking about a novel that's talking about haunting, a literal haunting, and how we're all basically, whether there's a ghost in our lives or not, we're all haunted people. We're all haunted by our mistakes. We're haunted by things that have happened to us. And it was just a wonderful coming of age story. Um, you know, there was also kind of a, a, uh, a love letter to the weird and the strange. Um, and I just loved it. I, I, and I, I can't say anything more about it because anything more about it is going to uh, offer too many spoilers. Uh, but it was really, 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 really great. I highly recommend it. Uh, the second one I want to offer is The Voice of the Martyrs uh, by a, a good friend, and uh, I, I'll go clearly admit it, good friend and, and a brother. I call him my brother from another mother um, and a mentor, Maurice Broadus. Um, there's a lot that's been said in the horror genre, and I think rightly so, about the need for diversity in the horror, the horror genre. And Maurice uh, has got wonderful stories in here um, that are, yes, they are diverse. They are, they are uh, um, from different ethnic cultures and different backgrounds, but they never lose sight of the fact that fiction is supposed to be entertaining. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful collection that I, I highly recommend. And, and my final recommendation for this time is A Penny for Your Thoughts by by uh, Bob Ford and Matt Hayward. Once again, I have to confess that... Uh, You've been hanging out with Bob Ford lately? Honestly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. Like, if there was an alternate universe and we're like, uh, Bob Ford and I were like, I could almost imagine ourselves in an alternate universe we were born in the same family and that we are twins uh, and that we basically have all the same loves and likes and... Uh, <laughs> probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I don't think there's anybody else in the horror genre um, who, uh, I mean, Bob Ford is my like, like spirit animal. He really is. He's, <laughs> he's just, my spirit animal. <laughs> he's my spirit animal. He's such a great guy, and he's such a great writer. And I think for years he struggled a little bit just with his productivity and things like that, but he's really hitting it in a big way. And Matt Hayward is like, Everyone needs an Irishman in their life. And Matt Hayward is that Irishman that I'm happy to have in my life. And A Penny for Your Thoughts is this great weird tale. Um, you know, it, it's a great weird tale. I don't know if I would call it horror. It's weird. It's speculative. Um, it's, um, it's supernatural. But I think the biggest thing about this novel is, about it, like, again... A lot of the kids were going to reflect back on It for a little bit. A lot of my kids were like, oh, It Part 2 is not really that scary. And then I would tell them, look, the most powerful part of the novel is not Pennywise. It's the Losers Club. It's those bonds the kids formed. So in a penny of your thoughts, the most powerful part is not the supernatural elements. What you have is a heroin addict who is now out of jail. And he's trying to walk the path. And he's doing it. He's staying clean. But that struggle of being an addict, and that's never going to change. Even though you're clean, being an addict is never going to change. That is what make, That is the engine that makes that novel move. And the best part is, is that they have a sequel coming. So I can't wait to see that. So those, those are my book recommendations. Uh, for this month, and and do you think some of the 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 disconnect between the two, it, like between it chapter one and chapter two, is when you're reading the book, you flip a page and you're there and you're right, you're you're back with the losers club, but as adults now, and then and then you get to go through and you get to, you immediately remember what it felt like, what they felt like when they were kids, and you're thrust immediately into now their adult problems mm. because it just jumps. Do you think that some of the disconnect in the movie 
is partly just that you don't, especially because most of the people watching the movie haven't read the book. Most of yeah, the people who are yeah. watching it have no yeah. idea. So not only are they not understanding it from that in that same context where we yep. read the book and we're jumping right from one to the other, and and it's a character-driven book, like you said, and and you you get to watch them develop to the point that you can see the connections between the, you yep. know the young well, one. It'll and be the, a generational thing too, because I I think that. Um, when you have that coming of age part, you've got the teens who are watching the movie or are living it yep. uh, versus the adults have experienced it and they're remembering back. Ver- then you get to the adult story, the adult reflection that's there, the, the, the trauma that's lost. I mean, within the book, I remember being really unsettled by the idea of, of, of those memories just being wiped out. Yep. That, that, that bothers me. That, that's not Pennywise, but that, that whole aspect of it um, hits a nerve with me. And that's, I think that's a much more adult thing where you're yeah. losing what's there. I think also, too, um, it'll be interesting to see what the experience is like watching the Supercut. Because they're going to come out with a Supercut DVD that's five hours long. And that way you're that's watching insane. You're watching the whole thing. And I, that's oh, I, the Supercut's going to be both movies put together. Yes, One movie. My feeble brain didn't connect those dots yeah. right away. Yeah. So the Supercut. Yeah, and I think that would help. Because yep. that's how you read it. That, yeah, like, that's, that's how, how it, reads. it reads on the page. Yep. Yep. It'll be interesting to see because I I'm still trying to get my wife to watch it because like to me you know she's watched the the the, the TV series and I mean it's like that with all the Stephen King TV you watch the Stand that was terrible was John Boy in the in two of his was John Boy no, in the Stand he wasn't too he wasn't in the Stand no no John Boy thank God. Boy.